I'm uh, Ella Shlemowitz. I'm a graduate student at uh, Amira Mehdi's lab uh, here at Imrik at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And I'm going to tell you a bit about my research using sensory substitution in the blind. So basically, the problem we're, we're working on is the problem of blindness. And there are about 40 million blind people in the world. And there are a lot of technological advances that are trying to fix that by creating artificial eyes, what they call um, retinal implants and so on. Uh, but all these implants and really cool um, technological advances are both kind of premature and also um, they take for granted something that shouldn't be taken, taken for granted in curing blindness. And that, that is the fact that um, we don't really see with our eyes. You may be able to replace the eye and, and place and put some sort of an artificial sensor instead of that. But the problem is that uh, we actually see using our brains. So just let me give you just one example. What do you see in here? Most people, when they see this image, when they see it for the first time, they kind of see uh, a lot of dots. And that's all you see until someone actually tells you that there's a Dalmatian dog over here. And this is his head, and the le one leg over here, and one leg over here. And once you've seen that, you can't go back. Every time you're going to see this picture in the future, you're going to see the Dalmatian dog. But you didn't see it until I explained it to you. So this is actually uh, a good demonstration of why seeing isn't the same as perceiving. Your eyes can see that, but your brains won't comprehend it until something clicks. And for most of us, that something has happened during our development and we've learned how to process all these complex visual in inputs into a coherent uh, visual world, okay? And for people who have been blind for a really long time, this isn't trivial at all. I mean, after all, if you've been blind from birth, how will you be able to understand anything of the whole complex environment that we see around us? So um, this has uh, two aspects. First of all, learning how to see, and the second of it is that um, this requires that the visual parts of the brain have developed or can plastically form uh, an ability to process visual, visual information. Okay, And that's not trivial at all. So in the lab we actually use another approach for uh, replacing vision and that's sensory substitution. That means we teach blind people, specifically people who have been blind from birth, how to process visual information using, uh, using sounds. We use uh, this type of uh, sensory substitution program called the voice uh, that, trans that transfers uh, images into sounds using a predicted algorithm. That is, the um, vertical axis is encoded by frequency, the horizontal by time, and the luminance or brightness of each pixel is encoded by the sound loudness. So we can teach blind people how to process these sounds which can convey any type of visual information, any image can be transmitted into sounds. We teach blind people how to process these images and we wanted to see, first of all, if they can at all learn how to process that. The second thing is to look at what their brain is doing, to see if we can see uh, activation, processing in the visual parts of the brain in those people who have been blind from birth. What we actually found out, which was pretty surprising, is that first of all, blind people were able to learn to do amazing things with this software. One of our subjects, participants, actually taken up photography as a hobby. And these are all images that he took using the sensory substitution device. He walks around with it and he says, okay, I want to photograph that palm tree. And he would never have been able to recognize that there's a tree in the distance or that it is a palm tree without touching it in the past. So this is pretty cool. So that was a bit of uh, background about my research and you are, you're welcome to join me in my next vlog uh, where I'll give you a demonstration about uh, how to use sensory substitution to see and I'll show you how you can learn that in just a couple of minutes.